Oh, God. There's something I'm not into. But that's beside the point. Okay, so I'll call the policy and legislation meeting to order at 6.33. Would everyone rise for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chavez, Annie Heller, Jackson, Mason, O'Connell, here, Rosas, Sosa. Okay. We have any written or any public participation? Okay, old business, new business. Okay, so then we need a motion to accept the policies as presented. Motion by Mr. Sosa, second by Rose. Could we hear roll call, please? Jackson? Aye. Mason? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, and then our next thing is our discussion of procedure for operational services. Yeah, so in your your policy packet, there is a, an administrative procedure that we just wanna bring before the board. It is It was recommended to us when we were going through the bond sales that we have this administrative procedure as part of our practices so that um, anytime we enter into a, a lending situation or a borrowing situation, we are committed to appropriate disclosures um, as outlined by, by policy. So we just wanted to include that and make sure that that was part of our practices. And as we went through our, um, our audit review and our, our rating call, that was one of the recommendations that they had made and that was reviewed by our legal counsel. So it is now included, it's not, it doesn't require board action because it's an administrative procedure, but it is for you to be aware of that we will follow proper disclosure procedures uh, when necessary. Oh, okay. And that's all. Okay, any other business? Okay, could we have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Okay, Rose, second by Alex. Could we get roll call, please? Mason? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Motion here. Okay, it's 636. Okay. On to the next one. So I'd like to call the uh, facilities committee meeting to order at 636. Could we do roll call again? Just Chavez? Hightower, Jackson, here. Mason, here. O'Connell, here. Rosas, Sosa. Here. Okay. Now, any participation? Okay. Old business? No old business. Okay. Go for it, Dr. Bruce. Sure. Okay. So with us tonight, we have representatives from Wold Architects and from Gilbain as well. And we have been working diligently through our core planning process with our groups for Sunnyside and MacArthur, as well as our groups for North Lake and Riley. And they have provided updated schematic designs um, from our architects, which are pretty exciting really adhering to what our core, our core values were as a community and adhering to the parameters and the expectations as outlined in our referendum. And then Gilbane's part is actually to make sure that we are going to stay within budget. So the two documents that you will be going through is a presentation of the schematic designs as well as kind of a cost breakdown to let us know that we are going to be on track to stay within budget for these projects. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to, we have Jocelyn Kelly and Fred Schuster with us this evening, and they are going to be presenting the schematic designs. Well, thank you oh. very much, Ben. <laughs> this is Fred Schuster, and uh, we're very excited uh, to be here tonight and uh, share with you the results of uh, many people's hard work. Uh, as Dr. Bresnahan uh, said, this is a direct response to the uh, uh, goals and values that were identified in the long range planning in the referendum. 
And uh, we're uh, very happy to report that not only are we, uh, we think, fulfilling your uh, expectations and the goals of the community, but we are on budget. Uh, Tom Leonard and Stuart McKenzie of Gilbane are with us tonight, and they're going to talk a little bit more about that. But first, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jessalyn Kelly to uh, give you a, uh, an update on the design progress. Thanks, Fred. Um, can everyone see the screen OK? Yes. Great. Awesome. So um, just want a quick outline kind of what we're going to go through as far as the design update tonight and, um, and the schedule and budget update. But, We'll take a little bit of look inside our process, give you a little bit of the background uh, with the feedback that we got from the core planning group. And then we'll look specifically at Riley Intermediate and North Lake Middle School, and then the interventions for the new uh, building for Sunnyside and MacArthur. And then we'll turn it over to Gilbane for schedule and budget. But before we jump into all of that, I wanted to extend a huge thank you to the members of our core planning group. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, we met for some of us 13 times <laughs> over the course of three months, um, but we did split into a couple of different groups. So we we met uh, six times for Riley and North Lake and seven times for Sunnyside and MacArthur to get all of this input. Uh, and we do want to emphasize that it was a huge effort and we are so appreciative. We got great feedback and we had a really consistent team throughout which really helped push the, the process and the designs along. So we're very excited to talk to you guys about where we're at. Um, so jumping right into Riley and North Lake, this is something that you should be relatively familiar with in terms of how we manage the long range plan process. So uh, the next step for part of the core planning group charges was to create design criteria taking those long range planning principles uh, and, and turning them into design interventions. So taking a look at some of the key things for Riley Intermediate and North Lake Middle School, looking at opportunities to create um, some opportunities for equitable education experiences across all projects. So taking a look at that. So we really started looking at areas for conferencing and individual instruction, how STEM and media should be closely located uh, to create some curricular opportunities. And you'll start to see that throughout all projects. We really started to weave a similar thread through everything, which is a huge testament to the culture in the district. And then looking at uh, learning commons opportunities, how, how to blend the classroom outside those traditional four walls, and then looking at how the spaces can be linked. So taking a look at these design criteria, this is what we'll use moving forward or what we did use moving forward to create uh, updates to the building program and diagrams. So in your packet, you should see a building program. It's the list of spaces and their sizes. Um, you'll see that there was a, a pre-referendum amount or a referendum planning size and list and then there may be some adjustments in schematic design. Those are a direct result of input and feedback from the core planning group. So none of that was done in a vacuum. That was all with your district and community team members. And then you'll also see some of the narratives for all of the systems. Some of the things kind of behind the walls, uh, above the ceiling, in the earth, all those things that are necessary for making the project successful but um, they're also done with feedback from the facilities team in mind, as well as maintaining some of these principles and criteria that we created as a group. And then to layer on top of that, it's also a little bit of code. So making sure that we're starting with the right baseline and quality for all of your systems moving forward to make sure that we're making the most efficient uh, and future ready buildings possible. And that's holistic for both uh, project sites. Now, taking a look at the building concept diagrams for Riley and North Lake, what we found uh, moving into kind of more detailed design with the group was that there was an opportunity to actually connect the buildings. And that was something that became uh, a great driver 
for the design, creating a secure way for students between buildings uh, and creating more of a link between both buildings and creating that link for the community. So you'll see that moving forward. And then um, it allowed an opportunity to blend the buildings uh, together as well as with the addition to make it feel like a cohesive campus. So kind of taking those two things and making sure that our added programs were, were meeting that need and for refresher, the, the additions we were considering at this building were a gym at Riley and a cafeteria space at North Lake. And with the, the program we initially created in the referendum planning, we were able to link those together. So the diagram you'll see uh, in the lower right of the screen just shows how the buildings can be used after hours. That orange space is um, completely lockable and making sure that we can extend the use of the building to the community, which has been so important and a, and a huge pillar in all of our discussions with core planning groups, and then making sure that it's also secure for student use. So we found a really great opportunity there. This is just a, a real life site version of what you just saw. So taking a look at what the gym looks like linked with the cafeteria for North Lake and what that opportunity to connect those main entries also starts to look like in plan. Um, also highlighting that it was key to the group that we not impede any of the traffic functions as they stand on the school. What we found is that they are working effectively. And so um, with this, we did impact delivery. So we're gonna need to look at and work really hard with the facilities team and operationally what works best for a, a receiving location, but largely all traffic patterns can remain the same with this site plan. Um, I'm gonna move into individual buildings and then I'll pause after this to look at uh, this site with any questions. But taking a look at the overall impact to the buildings, we are still maintaining that we're renovating all spaces to create a refreshed learning environments, but the areas that you see in green are um, a little bit heavier impacts and create some of those group learning uh, opportunities as well as your specials classes. So something we learned was that creating a suite for specials classes, your music, your art, your STEM, and your media center was really important throughout the district. So creating uh, that, that cohesiveness of curriculum and we found opportunities to do that here. You'll see that we're still locating the media center in the existing cafeteria. And that cafeteria is now being located in your existing gym. Um, it won't still look like your existing gym. There will be heavy renovations there. But that was something that was um, really important to opening up those learning common spaces that you see in the center. And those allow the classrooms to flex into that space. So because you're Classrooms are maintaining the, their existing size. We're creating that additional learning environment central to the building. Uh, this is largely similar to what was done in long range plan and referendum planning, um, which is a, a testament to kind of the goals of the, the district. But there were some minor modifications for uh, making sure that it operationally still worked the way it needed to for school and created some additional efficiencies in how we grouped curriculum together. Um, and then areas in light blue just indicate where we're doing the, the finish refresh. So making it all feel like one cohesive building, uh, new, new fixtures, new furniture, new um, flooring, paint, all that fun stuff will happen throughout the building. So that's kind of what's happening at Riley. And you'll see there's a break line here. You can see my cursor uh, on the right by the gym. That is actually where those two buildings connect. So looking at the gym and finding a um, synergy and sharing a platform or a stage in between allows us to create that link between the two buildings. So moving into North Lake, there were a few adjustments here just based on understanding a little bit more how um, to, uh, how to best optimize your existing facilities for future curriculum development. So uh, something that originally was not planned for in 
referendum was creating that learning commons upstairs, we were actually able to move the media center to the first floor and open up that space and we are still maintaining the right number of teaching stations. So it was just a little bit of a, a shuffle game to make sure that we had all the right parts and pieces and we spent a little bit of time looking at that and ensuring that but we were able to to make sure that we were including the, the synergy of curriculum in the right places. So one of the key criteria that you'll notice in um, this school was making sure that the media center and STEM had that synergy, but also made sure that the media center was on the main floor as part of the heart of the building was a, was a key component here and a real a driving factor for making sure that we created some of the same opportunities for environments here that we're also doing at the new building. And then looking at still adding the cafeteria, but like I said, that joint uh, between the two buildings, having a shared stage or platform for various events was something that became important to the group. So making sure that we can um, utilize that space for, for both schools uh, as, a, as a bridge between the two. And then still looking at that orange area in proximity to your gyms, um, to make sure that you can have that as community lock off space was something that worked out really well on this site. So we capitalized on that opportunity and made sure that we can um, Keep that after hours function and that rentable function moving forward. So similar here, because we moved the media center, we were able to create the learning commons on the second floor where your core classrooms or your central classrooms open up into that one space and create that that uh, varied learning environment. Uh, and then just a real quick look at the exterior study. So these are material inspirations uh, in as we move into design development, we'll start to finalize these items um, and, and come back to both the core planning group and you for input. But we did just want to show kind of where we were leaning and what the core planning group saw as we left off. So looking at inspirations for interior environments is what you'll see in the lower left. Lots of glazing, lots of natural light, uh, opportunities for more of that campus feel in that secured area. And then looking at how do we bridge all of those entrances together as we relocate the North Lake entrance, have the Riley secure entrance and create that, that uh, community entrance in the center how do we link all of those together to make it feel like one cohesive uh, space? So looking at opportunities on and inspirations from other projects for that. And then looking at how to maintain the existing or blend the existing uh, building materials, which are brick largely, um, with some more contemporary materials and create um, a, a refreshed look for the space while still maintaining some of the, the traditional feel that is important to the community as well as bringing it future forward. So just a quick look at a, a quick study of what we're landing on right now, but this is by no means final. And then similarly looking at massing concepts. So what we're looking at here on the left, uh, the left red box is your Riley entrance and just off the screen there's a red box on the right that's your North Lake entrance. Uh, and how do we bridge those two spaces with the addition uh, and blend those two facades together. So that's kind of our charge right now and looking at how do we optimize the amount of glass and glazing so that we have as much natural light as possible into those spaces. So looking at ultimately a pretty glassy facade uh, and finding opportunities to, to kind of elevate that, that area. So this is the, the front view. This is the parking lot side, but will be ultimately the front view for all buildings. And then this is a concept for the gym. This may adjust depending on um, how, how we look at storm shelter collectively for the campus. If it becomes the gym, this will be a little bit less glassy, but um, again, the hope is to make the environment as bright as possible and as light as possible. Um, and give views to the park that you have preserved out back. So just taking a quick look at uh, what, what opportunities exist on that face as well. But that's largely where we're at for uh, schematic design for Riley and North Lake. 
I do want to pause. I know it's a lot of information for any questions or comments. I have a question. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Justin, you can hear Mr. Sosa? Yes, I can. I know the, uh, the natural lights. How much is this going to affect the cold during the winter season? Uh, so we will, um, we do a lot of study on um, solar patterns to help make sure that we're getting the appropriate heat gain in the winter and preventing it in the summer. Um, we also make sure that all of our glazing is up to energy standards and energy code and beyond. So we'll make sure that it's well heated. <laughs> um, we wouldn't want anyone to freeze standing next to that, but we will, we definitely consider that in, in all aspects, both sustainably and um, in mechanical interventions as well. I think that's it for this site, Jocelyn. Thank you. Great. Well, <clears throat> moving on then to the next site, um, I do want to touch on the design criteria we created here. So uh, similarly to the other uh, projects, this is, this is how we organize the building moving forward. And this is not the exhaustive list but it, the exhaustive list is in your packet. Um, but things that we really wanted to focus on because we had the opportunity to create a new organization for the building is making sure that classroom organization was able to foster that team teaching and collaboration. Um, we also wanted to plan for future enrollment. So there will be a flexible space to incorporate uh, grade level fluctuations if you've got an extra section and you'll start to see that reflected in the building diagram. Um, and a key piece, so part of, part of the referendum planning was that it is physically one building, but we found that it was very important to maintain a separate identity for each building. Um, we spent a lot of time talking with teachers and with community members to make sure that we were hitting that right balance of individual school identity spaces and still capitalizing on the efficiencies of having one physical building on site. So that is something that you'll see play out in the plan. Um, site traffic, another huge concern, making sure that we limit any crossing of parent, student, and bus traffic uh, the, throughout the site at all hours. <clears throat> and then uh, making sure that any of the crossover between the buildings is intentional and controlled. So part of that um, <clears throat> independent operation is also making sure that we're controlling how students move through the space um, and making sure that there are opportunities for blending if, if desired, but making sure that it is definitely a controlled experience. Um, I think those are some of the the key tenants that we, we use moving forward, but there are lots of little nuances that you'll start to see um, <clears throat> as we pick up on the site. But <clears throat> looking at the site, uh, like I said, separating traffic patterns was absolutely key. So looking at opportunities to um, protect the preserve district office parking was important. And we determined that utilizing that front drive for bus drop off and pickup actually made the parking lot a little bit safer. So because bus drivers are a little more um, controlled and make sure that they, you know, they're, they're trained to operate in a certain way. Um, it actually makes crossing that parking lot a little bit safer than parents zipping through all the time. So hopefully those spaces are a little bit safer. Um, looking at adding up to the north off of McDermott both uh, a new car loop. So looking at how students enter the building and creating that as purely a parent drop off. And then having a separate staff parking lot access there as well. Because the site is so sprawling, uh, we wanted to make sure that there were opportunities for staff to park closer to the building in for both schools. Um, also looking at preserving or 
maintaining a parking lot and utilizing that as our buffer from St. Charles Road to the play surfaces. So uh, a large discussion as part of our core planning process was making sure that um, we provided the appropriate safety buffer, physical barrier and distance from the busy activity on St. Charles Road. With that in mind, um, it was determined that a parking lot provided an appropriate amount of distance even though it is a little bit farther from the school, but that was definitely a charge from um, especially community members. We had a great community voice on our committee. So uh, making sure that we had that barrier as well as a physical barrier, um, a fence and landscaping along that pathway. Um, taking a look at specifically control on the site, the car loop presents a little bit of a challenge because we don't want it to become uh, passed through to St. Charles. So making sure that we're restricting access, um, but it also allows some flexibility for um, delivery access. Uh, we're still working through some of the finer nuances, but the general concept is um, laid out here, making sure that all of the, the different traffic, um, both in timing and in um, traffic type are all separate appropriately. And then moving forward, um, just wanted to give a little bit of insight into the concept for this new building. So when we start with a blank, a blank slate, effectively, uh, we, we like to come up with a story that will help us carry through um, and that can start to resonate with the community. So we actually had a brainstorming session as part of our core planning group. And um, a couple of teachers actually noted that the proximity to trains and the concept of train travel was um, exciting to them because it meant that, you know, you can go anywhere, you can go anywhere on a train. Um, and then the other piece of it being that Berkeley is pretty central and can be considered its own destination. And so how do we start to play with the idea of, you know, your students can, can go anywhere and explore but also Berkeley 87 is, is where you want the community to kind of rally around and, and find home. So um, taking a look at that, uh, we, we found inspiration in the train, train lines, um, specifically like metro trains or L, L trains in the city. But the graphic on the left just kind of represents how you would move through the site and move through the building. So the blue line is community and they have a, a huge part to play in, not in just getting this passed, but in being able to feel like the facilities are um, available to them as well in some capacity. And then looking at how MacArthur and Sunnyside want to interface, but also your destinations along the way. So you'll see that for both of them, um, your media center is a little bit inside that hub. So that, that ring indicates the, the community-based function. So you've got your gyms and your cafeterias and your media center is just a little bit inside that ring. And then as you move outside that ring, it indicates where kind of your lock-off point is. And uh, so the inside is the community space as well as um, student space. And then looking at how you travel through your classes. So you have exploratory classes at all grades, but then you progress from third to fourth to fifth, and then again, sixth through eighth. So just kind of conceptually looking at the idea of trains, train travel, and, and how that can be uh, applied to the building. And then looking at the physical building itself on the right is kind of a basic boiled down plan. It's a little, it's a couple versions ago, but the concept still holds true. Um, how do you have them connect uh, intentionally are those three dots in the middle, that's our one of our core tenants. How do they connect intentionally and stay separate and maintain separate identities? So um, MacArthur splays off to the right and Sunnyside splays off to the left. So you'll start to see that play out directly in plan diagram as we move through. So taking a look to the bottom center of your of your screen is the main entry. Um, and it was intentional that the main entry is one space. Um, this is your bus drop off loop. It's also your visitor entrance. So limiting some confusion of, or, or allowing some of the um, efficiencies of having a parent with a student in each school. They go into the secure vestibule and they're able to access each main office 
in the same spot. Similarly, similarly for a visitor, they go into that same spot and can be directed to the right location. Um, and then in the, on the top of the plan, there are two uh, arrows named entry on each side of the building. That is actually your car drop off loop. And then you can intentionally drop off students on the sunny side portion or the MacArthur portion. And I think that really started to play into how we were able to separate the building. So as we move through, <clears throat> you'll see right on the uh, interior, basically our lobby, are your cafeterias with the hope that those can be a little bit more open to the lobby, but separate from each other. Um, this provides us an opportunity to connect them where possible, to have larger groups for anything using the stage. Um, it also allows us to separate serving but maintain the same kitchen. So some of those shared functions, your, your backup house, your um, mechanical spaces, those really wanted to be shared for the building. So by putting those in the center core, it really allowed us that efficiency. And then off to the right, um, you have all the MacArthur functions with your um, specials classes for both schools anchored towards the front. So that if any of those spaces are utilized by um, adult education in after hours, by clubs in after hours, they can be outside of that lock off point as well. And then towards the back of the site, you'll see the classrooms. So those are all oriented around a central learning common, similar to what we're able to do for Riley and Northlake. Um, these are just grade level centered. So the concept being that in, in argument for now, um, third grade and sixth grade are on the first floor with the remaining grades on the second floor. Um, taking a look at what it looks like to have some of those team teaching moments. And then you'll start to see in the, in the elbow here, you'll have that flex classroom. So it allows for that, um, that fluctuation of enrollment. So then moving to the second story, largely classroom space with some of your interventionists, but um, maintaining that equitable um, pods for each grade on each floor. So the biggest difference for um, MacArthur is they've added a, a science lab that Sunnyside doesn't have, but um, being able to create a little bit separate identity in terms of finishes and in terms of um, how we're able to organize their their personal belongings start to create that different identity for MacArthur so that it does feel like they've left Sunnyside when they're, and that was a discussion we had, you know, when they've graduated from Sunnyside effectively, they need to feel like they're moving up um, into MacArthur. So making some of those subtle changes to make them um, feel like they're growing along with their education. Um, and then I think some big things here where you see these X's are actually multi-story volumes. So making sure that the, the band and music areas have a little bit taller volume for their program and then having the opportunity to bring in some natural daylight to the cafeterias because they are a little bit more inboard. We wanna make sure that those are also nice and bright um, and just taking a look at opportunities to do that there. So um, quickly running through inspiration. So again, these are these are kind of things that resonated with the core planning group and what we'll mo use moving forward into detailed design. Um, selective use of color to create some of that identity. And I think we'll start to look at, um, especially with that training concept, how we can bring school colors or um, different elements into that, as well as creating some some warm environments through through textures and finishes. Um, again, lots of daylight, making sure that we're, we're capitalizing on those opportunities. Something that we were able to do in the plan, and I didn't really highlight this before, is every classroom has, every typical classroom has access to daylight, which was a, a great challenge on this site, but we were able to um, kind of push and pull things and stretch it to make sure that that, that criteria was absolutely met. Um, as it's being met on your existing buildings at Riley and Northlake. And then just taking a look at um, exterior volumes. I don't want to scare you with the color on the lower image. Um, we did talk about that as being a selective 
option, not, not kind of en masse, but looking at um, different textures for materials. So that's what we want to show on the, on the lower. It's metal panel, but not necessarily in um, primary colors. Um, and, and looking at the residential scale, as well as the, the more traditional scale, making sure that we're respecting the, the tradition of the district and of the community around it. So really taking cues from all of the buildings surrounding the site because we have such different uh, buildings all around. We've got manufacturing and business and residential and making sure that we can kind of blend those and make, um, make the new building a little bit more of a destination and create its own identity. So um, with that, that is where we're at for the new 3-8 building. Um, you saw a little bit more detailed massing for the existing sites and that's just because we had a starting point so we pushed the design a little bit farther than we typically would have to make sure that we were meeting some of those tenants um, and making sure that we were really capitalizing on how to blend those facades and here we're, we're starting from scratch so we're taking a little bit more time to make sure that the building is organized correctly and you'll see some of those design facades uh, show up in the in the next update. Okay, thank you, Jesslyn. And uh, if you go on to the next slide, um, as Jesslyn said, we'll uh, be starting the, the next phase, which we call design development. And we get into a lot of very detailed uh, user input to make sure that we are uh, uh, designing, arranging, and uh, equipping the spaces to really perform the functions that they need to perform to support the curriculum, to support the staff in all of the things that they're trying to do. So this isn't the end of user input that, that continues on into the next phase. And in the next phase, we really uh, start to delineate the, uh, the very detailed um, arrangement, uh, components, materials, how the, how the building is, is going to be constructed. Uh, and we'll come back with, uh, with further update on, uh, on how that's progressing in a future meeting. Uh, and then uh, next, we want to uh, turn it over uh, to uh, Tom Leonard and Gil Bain to talk a little bit about budget and schedule. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tom Leonard with Gil Bain. Um, Stuart McKenzie and I are here with you guys tonight, and uh, we do want to talk about, as Fred said, the, uh, the schedule and the budget. Uh, as Jesslyn said a little while ago, good news is we are on budget. The uh, project, the referendum that uh, was passed on March 17th, I believe, uh, was 105 million. And the image that you see up here shows that uh, we are right on with our 105 million. Um, and we went through a, a pretty detailed estimate for each of these projects, uh, Sunnyside and MacArthur, and then also for North Lake and Riley. Um, we didn't just square foot it. We went through and uh, with the documents provided by Wold, we went through those. We added a little bit of uh, what our knowledge is from building schools to what also should be in there if there was anything not shown on the drawings. And then our reconciliation process uh, took place then last week, uh, or I may be a week off, it was on the, uh, the 19th and 20th of August. And uh, we had uh, phone calls with the district, uh, with Terry, Laura, Dale, um, Wold, uh, Stewart, and myself, and then went through the estimates to see where we may have made some good assumptions, maybe where we didn't make some very good assumptions uh, and we were able then to refine our numbers and that uh, led us to be uh, on on budget with what we see there is 105 million. Um, Stuart, I don't want to steal your thunder. Uh, I'll hit the schedule in a minute, but uh, I was going to let you just kind of go through the, uh, the summary sheet here, um, if you would. Sure, Tom, no problem. Um, yeah, basically we, we divided it into two projects um, to do the estimate or we combine North Lake and Riley together. The two projects with the renovation and new additions uh, 
come out to 24.8 million. Um, MacArthur and Sunnyside, uh, we looked at that as one building, so it was easier to put it together for us as just one estimate. Uh, and that one was a little bit easier. It came out to 55.3. Um, we do have some contingencies, although um, those are necessary at this stage of design. Um, there's a lot of unknowns that we aren't able to account for, so we're trying to put those into it now. Um, so we're thinking that many times when we see this, the, uh, the design and estimating contingency will be uh, redistributed up above with those numbers late as, as we go through the process. Um, Plus, we had owner input and soft cost uh, that was given to us. So that, that allowed us to get to where we are eventually at the 105. So right now, North Lake and Riley, 24.8. Those are the construction costs. Um, MacArthur, Sunnyside, uh, 55.3. And uh, we have contingency at about a little bit over eight. And then we have the uh, owner soft cost at 16. So that gives us a total of 105. That's basically all that we can do right now at this point. All right, Tom, back to you. And we'll, thanks, Stuart. And we'll be working with Wold then as they progress through design development. Uh, I would imagine there'll be quite a bit of back and forth, um, you know, requesting a pricing scenario for this certain material, this certain uh, scheme. However, um, we see the design, uh, the design development phase proceeding. We'll be providing input in that. And then our next milestone schedule effort will be at the end of design development. Uh, and then we will also do a, uh, an update to this. Uh, actually, don't let me say it's an update. It's actually a whole new estimate uh, based on what we see on the documents. As Fred said, the documents will progress. Uh, there'll be more lines on the paper, uh, you know, in an expression. Uh, and then we will price what we see on the uh, design development documents, do a schedule update, uh, get together for another reconciliation with Wold, uh, with the district, and um, see where we are at that point in time. Uh, so I would imagine then that's going to uh, probably happen later in the year. Um, and uh, throughout the process then, as they go from design development to construction documents, we will also be providing uh, cost and uh, uh, material labor input. And then that will lead us to the, the uh, construction documents, the CDs. And then we will also provide a third estimate for the documents at that point, see where we are before we go out to bid. Um, which leads me to the uh, schedule uh, that you see up there. And right now we've got our bid documents uh, set to go out on the street to the contractors for bid in um, May of 2021, bidding period of May, June. Uh, and then we uh, plan to hit the, uh, the board meeting in July. I'm sorry, in June, I think it's uh, the 20, Fourth, I believe it is. Um, yeah, it might be the 28th. I'm sorry. Next year on the 21st, uh, 2021, the board meeting is June 28th. We will go to the uh, district with all of our recommendations to approve for all of the bid packages that we have received bids for, which would be the entire project for Sunnyside MacArthur. With that time, we would go for uh, approval. And then the uh, intent right now with the construction schedule you'll see there is to start work in July, probably two weeks for submittals, approvals, and then start construction uh, July 15th, middle of, and then that takes us to a substantial completion of Sunnyside and MacArthur in November of 2022. Uh, and then it, we're looking at right now with the district to determine uh, what the uh, next steps are because at that point then in January, we do proceed then with the demolition of the existing Sunnyside MacArthur schools. Uh, there'll probably be some abatement, uh, hazardous material, uh, that kind of thing required then before we can do any, uh, before we can do any demolition inside the school, we'll make sure that all of that's done. And then we'll do the demolition of those buildings, uh, restore the site area. And then um, we should be pretty much done with everything April closeout of Sunnyside MacArthur in uh, June, July of 2023. And then for Riley, <coughs> excuse me, Riley Northlake, then we have uh, scheduled bids to go out in October of 2021. Bidding period will be October, November of 2021. Um, 
and uh, we'll hit the board meeting. I believe it's going to be in December. We've got to work that out. Uh, and right now we're showing construction. If we can get in there earlier, we will, because that might be accessible during some of the breaks uh, over the holidays to allow us to get in a little bit earlier. Uh, right now, as you see there, when the weather breaks, we're looking at construction starting uh, with the link and the rest of the work, the new gym, uh, and pretty much everything that in March of 2022, again, this is North Lake Riley, and then we've got substantial completion scheduled for July of 2023. Uh, and then final close out with everything on um, end of July of 2023. And that would be everything North Lake, Riley, Sunnyside, and MacArthur. And that's pretty much where we are right now. We continue to update the schedule, uh, track it. We are doing a P6 schedule uh, kind of parallel to this. And then we coordinate that with Wold uh, for our milestone dates here, our bid award construction and our completion dates with the uh, information that we have at this point in time. Does anybody have any questions, budget or schedule at this point? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I think this is so exciting. And I don't know about all of you, but it seemed like so far away. Yes. And now all of a sudden it seems like, wow, this is gonna be here before we know it. So thank you, Jocelyn and Fred and Stuart and Tom. I think um, this was a very comprehensive update. A lot of work has gone in to get us to this point. Um, a lot more work still yet to be done, but as you say, this is the fun part for the teams to get that design input. So I am very excited about where where we are and where we're headed. Um, any other questions or comments from the board? No. I think we're all good. Thank you all so much. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. I know. Can you even like? Can we adjourn? That is all we have for that. Yes. Okay, could we have a motion to adjourn this meeting at yes. 720? Okay, Rose. Second. By Alex. Okay, could we have roll call, please? Mason. Aye. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Now let's move on to the board meeting, please. Okay, I'd like to call the board meeting to order at 721. Could we have a roll call, please? Chavez, Hightower, Jackson, Here. Mason, Here. Locano, Here. Rosa, Sosa. Here. Okay, could we have a motion to accept the written correspondence? Motion by Rose, second by Alex. Could we have a roll call, please? Locano. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Mason. Aye. Motion here. Okay. Any oral? No. No, we have no questions online. Hmm? Oh, we, we have, have no questions. questions or comments online. Okay. Then we need a motion to approve the um, minutes, the regular board meeting July 27th and closed session June uh, 22nd. Rose, okay, can we have a second? Dennis, can we have roll call, please? Sosa? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Mason? Aye. Okay. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Any old business, Dr. Parsley here? No old business. Okay. And how about the uh, similar Any old business? No. No, no old no business. Okay. All right. Mrs. Vince. Yes. That the Board of Education approve the accounts of claims payable authorization as presented. Were there any questions at all on the bill? There were no questions. Okay. Could we have a motion, please? Rose, second by Dennis. Could we have roll call, please? Jackson, Aye. Mason, Aye. Opano, Aye. Sosa. Aye. Motion here. Okay. And the monthly building rental report is included for your pack, in your packet for your review. And this is informational purposes only. Thank you. Okay. All right. Dr. Sullivan. No business. Okay. Mr. Travis. 
No old business. Okay. Is there any other old business for the board? Okay. We need executive session. Uh, yes, just a okay. one. Okay. Do we need a motion to recess into executive session at 723? Yes. Second play rolls. Could we have roll call, please? Mason? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Motion carried. So for those viewing online, we are going to adjourn to closed session. Um, it should be relatively brief. We'll turn off the camera and the volume. Please stay tuned and we'll come back as soon as we can.
start back up. Okay, we are back in open session, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Okay, so we'll reconvene to open session at 7.32, and all members are present except Maria, Calvin, and Carlos. Consideration of new business reports. We did have a PACE meeting on the 20th of August, and I've just got my report written here, so I'm not gonna go into that. And my next regular PACE meeting is Thursday, September 17th at six o'clock, okay? And then I think we had um, minutes from the policy and legislation meeting right from 727 that were in our board packet, correct? Does anybody have yes. any questions? Okay, go for it, Dr. Bosnahan. Okay, um, we ask that the board accept the resignations of the following personnel, Jasmine guzman Pineda, William Jacklin, and Carrie Woodhouse as presenters. Okay, motion by Dennis, second by Rose. Could we have roll call, please? Okay. Hi. Sosa. Hi. Jackson. Hi. Mason. Hi. We ask that the board employ the following personnel effective August 24th, 2020. Cheryl Allaire, Jasmine Brown, Tracy Coronia, Richard Kelly, Melissa Rivera, Christina Sauter, Jillian Stolberg, and effective August 25th, 2020, Colleen Valentino and Jacqueline Palermo. Motion by Rose, second by Dennis. Could we hear roll call, please? Sosa? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Mason? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Motion carried. We ask the board accept the resignation letters of the following personnel, Anna Halloway, Catalina Ibarra, and Diane Tallman. Motion by Rose, second by Dennis. Could we hear roll call, please? Jackson? Aye. Mason? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Motion carried. And we ask that the board approve the leave request as presented from Teresa Dunn. Okay. Motion by Rose, second by Dennis. Could we hear roll call, please? Mason? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Motion carried. And we ask that the board reassign the following personnel as presented. Noemi Diaz from lunchroom supervisor to assistant cook at MacArthur, effective August 24th, 2020. And Teresa Garbano from Florida custodian position to maintenance worker, effective September 1st, 2020. Motion by Rose, second by Dennis. Could we hear roll call, please? O'Connor. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Mason. Aye. Motion carried. And I know that we have Teresa on the line uh, watching this evening. So congratulations, Ms. Garbano. We appreciate all your work and we wish you the best of luck in that position. Um, we ask that the board employ the following personnel, Esmeralda Armenta, Marcella Ramirez, Ivan Saseo, and Monique Torres. Motion by Rose, second by Dennis. Could we hear roll call, please? Sosa. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Mason. Aye. O'Connor. Aye. Motion carried. And we ask that the board adopt the following policies as outlined in your packet. Okay. Motion by Rose, second by Alex. Could we hear roll call, please? Jackson, Aye. Mason, O'Connor, Sosa, Aye. motion carried. And based on our presentation that we saw during the facilities meeting, we asked that the board approve the schematic designs for MacArthur and Sunnyside and North Lake and Riley as presented. Okay. Motion by Rose, second by Alex. Could we have roll call please? Mason, O'Connor, Sosa, Aye. Jackson, Aye. motion carried. We just have a couple of items in our in my oral report for this evening. Um, unfortunately, the rebuild Illinois fast track grant that we had applied for and did a very quick turnaround. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan and our architects who put in a lot of time to make that happen. Unfortunately, that got put on hold. And then when it did go through, I believe there were 17. Um, and I think they were all like municipalities that were awarded the grant. So unfortunately, we did not get this one but we will be in good shape and prepared when the next opportunity comes along. Uh, we did have our first week with staff back on site last week, and it was so wonderful to see our buildings occupied again. We had our opening Institute Day last Monday, which was wonderful. Um, then that was followed by two remote planning days, which I know Ms. Zimmerman will share a little bit more about, full of professional development. And then Thursday and Friday, we hosted our meet and greets for our students to come on site, pick up some wonderful school supplies, their t-shirts, a mask, and also a chance to meet some of their teachers. 
it was just a great opportunity to see kids again because we haven't seen those faces back here since March 13th, which is way too long to not have kids in our in our school. So even though it was outdoors and it was socially distanced and everyone had their masks and everything was very safe, um, I could still see lots of smiles behind those behind those masks, and it was great to Aww. to reconnect with our families again and to at least start that opportunity to make a better connection for our first day of remote learning, which was which was today. And so far, I think we've gotten very successful reports. Good. Some tech glitches and at, at the beginning, which we expected, trying to just get everybody logged in. But overall, it was a very positive day and um, even had some parents sharing positive feedback to our principal. So we're very happy about, about that. Um, our health data. So as we are on track to look at the potential for switching to a hybrid model, um, or if that is even going to be feasible, I am closely monitoring our community health data, which includes a variety of um, pieces of information. As a proviso township, we're actually looking at all of our specific zip code areas for the seven day positivity rate. We also have Cook County is going to be putting out new metrics for us to be monitoring, for us to look at in terms of not just the positivity rate, but also cases per 100,000, um, how children are being impacted in terms of positivity. And additionally, we are keeping track locally of our staff health data just to see how many staff are quarantined or unable to work on site on any given day. Because if we don't have teachers, we can't run school. And so we want to be monitoring that very carefully to ensure that we can really tell when um, staff are out sick or when they have to be quarantined or anything like that so we can determine how we would be able to staff our classroom. And then um, obviously the facilities planning you can see is right on track. Timeline wise, it is moving full steam ahead, very exciting. And so stay tuned as the design process continues, we'll continue to give updates to the board. And that is all the information I have for tonight. Okay. Any questions? Okay, Ms. Zimmerman. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, the first item on the that I would like to talk about is our Seesaw Learning Management Platform, and I discussed that last month. And um, I, I would ask that the Board of Education ratify the amount of, for the purchase of Seesaw as presented in the packet. Motion. Rose, second by Dennis. Could we hear roll call, please? O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Mason. Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Next, I'd like to move on to the Berkeley Blueprint for Teaching and Learning. We have had um, a group of staff, about between 45 and 50 staff meeting um, over the last month to plan our teaching and learning plan. Um, it has been um, a great experience to have all of our staff um, giving input. We first focused on our core beliefs and looking at how do we provide equitable experiences for all of our kids, building relationships, focusing on high quality instruction, um, determining the, making sure that we focus on determining individual needs of our students as they return to learning um, from the break in terms of COVID and being um, without us um, over the summer. Making sure we're flexible and adaptable and responsive. Um, the team did such a fabulous job collaborating on our master schedules. We outlined all of our expectations with regards to um, what our, we can expect from our staffs, what we can communicate to our families. We looked at the commitments we would need in terms of partnering with our families as well as um, our students. So I think um, we also looked at our instructional models for the day and we talked a little bit about that last time in terms of the synchronous learning or the live direct instruction, which I know you'll see um, quite a difference in terms of our spring remote learning um, assessment and grading and they just did a fantastic job. And I just cannot praise our staff enough for the commitment of coming in and working um, remotely with me over the summer to put this plan together. And I think that we have a great trifecta in terms of the staff commitments and our parents and um, our students all together. I think we're gonna have a successful experience moving it forward um, into this um, journey of remote learning 2.0. Um, and in a few weeks, um, as Dr. Bresnahan said, we'll continue to 
um, with our goal of hopefully moving to a hybrid um, as our current our health conditions um, as we monitor those, but we'll be planning behind the scenes. So um, when that comes to us, we'll be ready um, to move forward with that. The next item I wanted to share is we had our new teacher orientation and I was really excited. We were able to have our new teachers on site with us, um, which was great to have some of our staff back in the building um, and get to see them face to face and get to know them. Some of the feedback I got um, from the survey for our new teachers was that they really felt welcomed and invited um, by our Berkeley um, presenters and Berkeley staff. They were um, thrilled at the time that each of our presenters took to make sure that they all felt supported was one of the comments I got. It was a great experience. Um, it was a great opportunity to meet with our mentors. And Joe Byrne was awesome, was quote unquote. And indeed he is, he is, he is for sure. <laughs> He's amazing. Yes. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is our uh, two remote planning days for um, professional development. It was a jam-packed two days, um, but it was, I thought was fantastic in terms of the working work that our coaches did, our instructional coaches and our um, teaching staff presented about 95% of all of our presentations. Um, we had a couple of outside presenters for our Mayan um, and some ready math, but was primarily led by our coaches and our staff. It took an extensive amount of planning um, and all of the input for the courses or the sessions that we did came from our teaching and learning um, team on what we felt that they would need the different um, technology platforms as well as instructional strategies to get us off to a great start. And just some of the feedback I got from that survey was it was positive overall, all the PD was valuable. Um, how to remote 2.0, which was the one really about instruction, mainly was the most valuable. Um, I felt comfortable that I could do this, which I thought was fantastic, um, that our presenters were, were well prepared and paused when they needed to, when they could tell that we needed more support and really went at our pace. So I think even though it was a jam packed couple of days overall, I think we had really great feedback. And we have some really great feedback on what are the next steps that our staff might need as we look for, we have three more remote planning days. Um, so I think that gave us some, also some great information and some steps to move forward in our planning as well. So it's been a great couple of days and I am so appreciative of our staff and the work of our coaches uh, to make that possible. Thank you. Okay, any questions from anybody? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Does the Board of Education approve the letter of engagement of Chapman Cutler LLP for Bond Council and Disclosure Council as presented? Motion by Rose, second by Alex. Could we have roll call, please? Sosa? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Mason? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Motion carried. Place is the first item the summary of budget, statement of position, and the student activity reports for the period ending July 31, 2020, are provided through review. Okay. And on my oral report, uh, during the preparation for the um, rating call and the uh, bond issue, we discovered that there were some items um, that either were omitted or the incorrect date was posted in a continuing disclosure posting um, of our so requirement that we, we report on a platform called PEMA um, and for the bond continuing disclosure requirements. We worked with PMA, they made the corrections uh, to those postings and uh, during the first year of after our bond issues, PMA will provide the uh, continuing disclosure postings to the HEMA platform. After that, we have asked PMA to provide us with a, an agreement to provide those services for the, the second year, and we will work with them beyond that to get an agreement. Um, as you may recall, I bring that forward every year, every couple years, if you have a multi-year agreement um, from vendors to provide that. So that will be provided through PMA. And the student meals, uh, 
We are roughly on the meals. We have resumed student meal uh, servings. They are providing meal, breakfast and lunch meals daily for parent pickup. Um, back in the school year, we are tracking which child um, takes a meal. Um, even though we're where you have community eligibility um, participation, we still track which students pick up a meal. Um, and we sent a blast robocall out to families and we have it on our website about it and each of the schools during the uh, meet and greets did some marketing themselves to make sure parents were aware of it and one of our cafeteria aides her daughter hand drew a beautiful sign at Jefferson to not only welcome them but to encourage them to participate with a little Jefferson Jaguar mascot <laughs> on their side. So it was really, it was really cute. So um, we hope that participation continues. Um, we had some feedback today from parents that neighbors, you know, were not, couldn't get on the website, but they're spreading the word to their, their neighbors and uh, other children and families that they know. So we hope to see participation continue to improve. Okay, and the next item, uh, as you may recall, we get a rebate for utilizing and participating in the PCARC program throughout ASCO. And last year, we received $525.86. And after that, the board agreed to increase the, uh, the limit, the credit limit for the PCARCs and allow us to pay our, some utility bills with that and increase my purchases. And this year, I'm happy to report that our rebate is $4,548. allowing us to increase our usage of the key card, and the district has the ability to use that amount any way they want. It is not restricted or earmarked like rest might be. Hey, you show up. So. <laughs> It's only that easy, right? <laughs> okay, and then the last item um, when I presented the tentative budget last month, I informed the board that we would be including the first bond issue information in the final budget. Well, through the rating call and the um, official statement in the first bond issue process, the PMA, I believe they even reported to the board that the environment is positive for us to issue the second wave of the bonds in February versus next summer. So the final budget will include two bond issue uh, numbers in the in the uh, budget, the final budget. Initially we thought it would be next summer, but we'll have two now and then I think the second, the third and final one would be in 2022. Good. And that is the end of my report, unless there are any questions. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Dr. Sullivan. Okay, I have to follow up today. It's great. <laughs> um, Go for just, it, you can do it. All right, I'll do what I can. Just a few things. <laughs> One, um, an update uh, for our ESL cohort. We mentioned that this is something we're beginning, and um, under the leadership of Ms. Valdez and also Ms. Valencourt, we've been able to come up with 22 participants this year in our ESL cohort, which is a wonderful number. And seven of those teachers are actually case teachers. And that will help us ensure that our children who are duly identified as both special needs and English learners will be able to receive their English learner services while they are attending a PACE program. And so we're very excited about that. And that's being funded through our grants. Also, I want to mention that I went through the federal requirement and state required training for Title IX, and so I'll be the coordinator for the district, and then those were also policies which were approved tonight as well. Additionally, um, I provided homeless training for um, our school offices, and I attended homeless training or maintaining mental training this year through the Illinois State Board of Education. And we currently have 27 students who have qualified this year so far as considered to be homeless. And so I just want to mention that to the Board of Education that our schools are on the lookout for that. 
particularly since what we've been going through with the pandemic and different changes with people's economic circumstances, that uh, we're doing that in the most confidential way that we can. And then helping to overcome any barriers, not only for the children attending school, but also for needs the families may have. So we're working closely with our counselors and social workers to uh, provide the stability that in a education will uh, provide for those families. And of course, we hope to be back in person because that will help all of us become even more stable. But uh, in the meantime, we're reaching out to the greatest extent that we can. And then finally, I just want to inform the board that one of our PE teachers uh, applied for a uh, grant through an organization called the Illinois Association of Health, PE, Recreation, and Dance. I have to admit, I didn't even know the organization existed. But <laughs> the teacher applied, and this was near the time of when we, with Dr. President, said we stopped attending school, I think March 13th. It was sometime right before that time period. The teacher was awarded the grant to MacArthur Middle School, and it was a grant to help offset the cost of heart rate monitors. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with what they are, but basically it allows our PE and health teachers to measure the level of vigorous exercise that the children are doing in the um, activity. And so it helps meet the Illinois standards for physical fitness, and it's a great way to use our technology too. Oh, wow. Anyhow, it wasn't the award was not enough to allow the experience to take place at both schools because, as you know, we have a district curriculum, not just for school. So we were able to find some matching funds with other grants, and we're going to um, hopefully it will be an activity when the children return to in-person um, learning. But that should be a really nice way for our PE teachers to help make sure the children are experiencing. Um, vigorous activity, and it's, it's really interesting the research on that. There's schematics where it shows the brain and how more active the brain is once the children get some physical activity. So we're excited about that. I just want to move on the board about that. Good. Um, and that's the end of my report, unless there are any questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Travis. Good evening. Hello. Tonight, I just wanted to inform uh, the board that we have uh, three certified uh, staff vacancies and we have four uh, support staff vacancies. We are working on those vacancies, but uh, we work very hard to try to fill our positions this year. Um, second on my agenda item is GCN trainings. I just want to let the board know that we have updated the trainings for the 2021 20, uh, school year but we have not released the trainings to the staff yet because we're waiting for some feedback from ISBE to see if they have set uh, their schedule for the 2021 school year. So once uh, we make sure our schedule is aligned, what ISBE has set for, then we'll release our schedule um, to the staff so they can be begin their GCN trainings. And those are mandated trainings that they have to take every year just to stay abreast of different you know, laws and mandated trainings that Illinois has set forth for us to go through. Um, unless you have any questions, that's the end of my report. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, any other new business for the board? No? Okay, could we have a motion to adjourn by Dennis, second by Rose? Could we get a please? Jackson. Mason, Mike O'Connell, Sosa. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Burton.